Well, let's take you back to the Federal Capital Territory where business editor Tudor Fogunjobi is standing by with another amazing guest to talk about the challenges in the business sector. Well, thank you so much again, Sarah. Thanks so much uh, for holding forth. Well, I now have my other guest, yes, Mr. Ade Adefeko. Yes, he is the Director of Corporate and Regulatory Affairs at Orleans Agri. He's joining us live at NES 30. Thank you so much. It's good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Yes, and I think it's good to start with the theme again because before we go, I know you play actively in the agricultural space. Uh, we are going to go there, but let's start with this theme, Collaborative Action for Growth, Competitiveness and Stability. A lot of words here, and they all mean so, so very well. So how does this come to you at this time? Well, it's, it's a very strong, it's a very strong uh, theme for this year. And it's a theme that speaks to collaboration. It's, it's a theme that speaks to competitiveness. Mm. And it's a theme that speaks to us working together, public-private sector partnership. And of course, you know, we're speaking, we're celebrating 30 years of any yes. NESG. And uh, if you recall, the founding fathers, the decremers of this world, uh, the late Ms. Shonekon, Dr. Suleiman, who can go on and on who said to themselves, you know what, we need to influence policy. Mm. And it's, before then, don't forget that this was birthed during the military era. We now transitioned into democracy and we've been evolving over time. Mm. And uh, so far, so good. We're not there yet, but to a large extent, we will get there, or we're mm. trying to get there. Mm. Inclusive development yes. uh, is something that many talk about, but look at the challenges we face as a country and as a globe. How do you see, see all of that affecting this inclusive development that we expect to achieve? Well, you know that inclusivity is in different facets. Inclusivi inclusivity gender, yeah. inclusivity, inclusivity generationally, and inclusivity across sectors and across the divide. Talking about the legislature, the executive, the judiciary, and the subnationals. Don't forget that NESG, NESG has policy commissions, okay? Structured around thematic groups that speak to different sectors and facets. And I think that's a very, very important one. So people usually only talk about the summit, which is yearly, but there's a lot of work that goes on behind, you know, all year round. Impact. What about impact? Tell me, impact to a large extent, we must speak to the fact that Impact can be measured. What doesn't get measured doesn't get done. But NSU over the over the decade, over decades, has been able to impact. For particularly, look at the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, for example. Yes. At the end, yes, NSG started it in wow. the Midwest, and they came up with the the, the, the entire draft policy. You know, for it to be adopted. That's on one hand. The corporate, the corporate and allied matters uh, act. act. They did it as well. So those things, are, you know, mm. those things are just a few of the things they've done over the years, over the decades. Because this is three decades. It's not mean things. It's not, it's not, and you know, the conversations will continue. And like I said, what doesn't get measured doesn't get done. And again, you are talking about the field this year. We're talking about competitive. You can really be competitive when you have one competitive advantage. Mm. We have competitive advantage in many areas, which we must bring to bear. And we must speak to collaboration on a very constant basis. We must be strategic, we must be critical, and we must be attention. Research shows that agricultural sector, manufacturing, these are the sectors that can create the needed jobs for their challenges at the moment. Have you been able to cope for a while? I think it doesn't matter. How has it been? I, I, I didn't think this question was going to come. I'm sure you, you probably said to yourself, you know, if you are speaking to issues, you must speak, you speak to food security. Yes. Food security is an integral part of national security. Yes, it is. It's a nexus. Of course. There's a, there's a, there's a, a kind of a fusion. A hungry man. And, uh, yes, yes. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, the way things, I mean, I've always often spoken to the fact that prior to now, we had an availability problem and an affordability problem. Okay. Food, not readily available. Where it is available, it's not affordable. Food inflation is at an all-time high. Yes. But, you know, for me, I think we need to be more deliberate in our actions. We need to be stop being altruistic and be more long-term. I mean, I, I, I'm old enough to speak to development plans. I'm old enough to speak to the, re the respective agricultural uh, revolutions we've come through. Operation Feed the Nation, Green 
real revolution, eh? agricultural change agenda. And we can go on and on. Now we're talking about, to a large extent, hope renewed. So, and we're believing that hope will be realized. Mm. And so far, we were moving, but we're moving very, uh, very arithmetically, oh, rather than move, moving geometrically. We can do better. And what, in the ways in which we can do better, you know, I'm often one of those who believe that let's not talk about the challenges, let's talk about the solutions. The solutions is that we need to be a bit more deliberate, we need to plan better, and we need to involve the organized private sector. We need to have these conversations on on a recurring basis. And for me and for us, we have no reason not being food secure. With 220 million people, we have no reason not being food secure. We're the largest producer of yam in the world, the largest producer of cassava in the world, the largest producer of, uh, of coconut in the world. We just staples, we're not doing better, but we can do better. But we need to make sure that we're cohesive in our policies. And our policies must be private sector led. What the government must do is just to enable policy. Hmm. Part of the discussions here will touch on security and we know what security has to do with agriculture. So it's going to be a two in one question. What is your reaction? What would you advise to government with regards to security? And have we started to add value to our produce? Because many will say, let's just get something to eat. But are we also adding value? Our cocoa goes and we get chocolates back. All of these examples go on and on. I think, I think we need to be very careful when we, the way we, uh, we speak to this conversation. Okay. You cannot be everything to everybody. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a cocoa producer or processor, be a cocoa, be a cocoa processor, send the processed cocoa to X or Y, who in turn makes chocolates, which is mm -hmm. a different, different okay. thing entirely. Okay. If you don't want to make chocolate, you can't be compelled to make chocolate. It's a part of the value chain. It's a value chain. Yes, yeah, it's, you value chain. it's important to look at the value chain. But make sure in that value chain, you are getting value and you're getting return and foreign exchange. Nigeria, prior to now, used to be number one in cocoa. Well, probably now we're in a distant fourth. Okay? We can do better. Cashew, sesame, and the likes. But to be fair, the likes of Ulam Agri, which you know, yeah. have been around for close to 35 years and have been adding value to most of these producers and exporting and generating revenue. But you need more Olam agrees across the country. The country. You are speaking about security. Security, to be fair, has improved under well, this administration. I'm not saying we're there yet, yes. but I think we are tackling it in a very systematic and systemic way. Hmm. And we just need to give it more time. But my problem is that if you go to the hinterland, the produce is there. But you know what? The problem is storage and preservation, post-harvest losses. Hmm. Those are the critical issues that we face. And how do we address that, private sector? Private it's capital sector. intensive. It's capital intensive, and government has no business in business. In business. And government has no business in agriculture, apart from providing enabling environmental legislation that will spur private sector drivers to move. And there must be predictability of policies. No policy flip-flops. Mm -hmm. right? And government must understand that any policy you come with must be properly sequenced. So what mm -hmm. we have right now, we have a problem of sequencing, mm -hmm. and we need to sequence properly. The role of technology, as I almost let yes. you go, yes. we prepare for the Vice President's arrival. Yes. The role of technology in agriculture is also key. And one of the uh, teams here, some teams, is um, in igniting innovation and digital uh, revolution, I think. So how do you see that also affecting the agricultural sector? Technology and agri, many are talking about... Mm -hmm. 30 years ago and now, the world has moved in yes. leaps and bounds. Digital inclusion, technology has come to... It's playing. You have, you're talking about smart climate and pressure, okay? There's a lot of technology being deployed, drones here and there. So people are not talking about the the land you have. We are talking about how you are using technology to improve yields on the one hand, to precision agriculture, and I think to a large extent, AI. You know, we can go on and on. Technology is playing a pivotal role and will play a pivotal role for a very long time to come. And I think we are adopting that as well. Innovate or die. And I think we're innovating. It's going the young ones are coming up with technologies that are smart, 
and that we can adapt to improve yields and to improve our entire agricultural value chain and the entire ecosystem. Mm. Hmm. Very, 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 very interesting way uh, to, to, to wrap up this conversation. I, I'm just looking forward at all what happens, growth around the agricultural space, manufacturing space, so that we can create this uh, needed uh, jobs. Uh, well, I, I must thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Ade. Adefeko, Director, Corporate and Regional Affairs. Regulatory uh, Affairs. Regulatory Affairs. Oh, Director, Corporate and Regulatory Affairs. Thank you so much. Apologies for that. I'm sorry, Adefeko has been speaking around agriculture. Uh, and, and I'm looking at Nigeria playing very, very well. High in that, in that sector. South Africa and some other countries are doing pretty better than we are doing. We pray that we get to that. But I must thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, there. thank you so much there. Uh, well, yeah, Sarah, you, you heard it live from uh, Mr. Adi Adefeko who's the director of corporate and regulatory affairs i got it right this time olam agri uh saying a lot about nigeria's economy agriculture what we need to do i saw my first conversation to all around the theme that's what we've been focusing on which is collaborative action for growth sustainability um competitiveness and sustainability you you also remember i would i would have asked that from mr Adifeco before i let him go around the afcfta if you would remember that is also an agreement that everyone expects that would strengthen trade around the african continent but how well nigeria is playing around that space so we, we are yet to know but i know that countries are taking advantage of that so that will be it uh, for today yes I hear you. yes i can hear you Hello, Sarah. Use the to Business editor, Hello, Sarah, Hello, Sarah. of course, we'll get more updates. We'll get more updates from you, of course, tomorrow, uh, later on, about um, the 30th yes. um, Nigerian yes. Economic Summit in Abuja. Well, hopefully, we get to get back to you and confirm you, if, uh, as at the time, the Vice President will get that we understand it will be there pretty soon. Uh, hopefully, he gets to bring up some uh, policies that can change. Uh, the business landscape in Nigeria and in some other uh, economies around Africa. I'm a business editor there with some out. exclusives with some business involved. leaders Not at the Nigerian Economic of... Summit in Abuja. This is the 30th edition of that summit. Well, let's go to.